in this video I'm going to be adding my flared or dimpled speedles to the bomber seat without the use of a commercial dimple die and afterwards I'll fit the seat to the truck coming up hey how's it you oaks and welcome back if you don't know me my name is Duff and I run a tiny one-man shop out here in the middle of a forest in South Africa. So in the previous video I built my bomber seat here from one piece of metal and now I would like to add that final touch and create some flared or dimpled speed holes all over. <laughs> Well, I think I've uh, <laughs> drilled enough speed holes for one day, but who knows, maybe the fever grips me again and I'll add some more. So now I just know you are all going to tell me that it still needs something. Yeah, you want me to flare them or dimple them, right? So how am I going to do that? I'm going to have to come up with a forest engineering plan. <laughs> So I present to you, all the way from my forest in darkest Africa, a really high tech piece of forest engineering, a dimple die tool that can, do different, that can do two different sizes. So what the hell do we have here? A piece of flat bar, I've got two slices of pipe here of different sizes, and then these steel balls that just nicely fits in there. I found my steel balls, <laughs> these steel balls, at my local steel shop. They have different sizes, they are solid. I'm sure a big old ball bearing would work even better, because it's harder. But this is what I've got. Let me show you how this contraption works. So I'll give you some dimensions first on the smaller one. Unfortunately for my friends in the States, it's going to all be in millimeters. I'm too stupid to do these sort of fine, more fine measurements in inches, so you might have to convert it yourself, I'm sorry. The diameter of my steel ball is 30 millimeters. Let's see, the inside diameter of my piece of pipe is 28 millimeters, so it, you can see it's a little bit smaller than the ball. So the hole in my metal is smaller than the, whole, than the ID of the piece of pipe. This one is 20, what does it say there? Let me see, 23 millimeters, which is simply a size I had on my step drill. So 23, 28. So it is smaller than that inside hole. Now this is where the high tech part comes in. <laughs> I'm going to put this on top of that and feel in there <laughs> braille so that my overlap is roughly the same on each side put my little ball on top and give it a good whack if it's not quite center I can move it around a little bit and give it another whack or so and there we have it my dumple is done Let's try my larger size. The ball on this side is 40 millimeters. The pipe ID measures, let me see now, 39 millimeters. And the hole in my piece of plate comes from my step drill and it is 31 millimeters. So 31 versus 39. 
same story. I'm going to put it on there touchy-feely, <laughs> roughly, all the way around the same overlap. Put my ball on top and give it a good whack and see what I got. It's not 100% center, so I'm just moving it over a little bit. And there you go. Good enough for me. So I suppose the downfall of the forest dimple die is that there's no accurate way in which to center the hole before you whack it. But you know what? It's not that critical. You'll soon get the feel for it. And if it's once you've given it that first whack and you see it's not exactly center, you can just move it a little bit and then correct it. It works well enough. <laughs> Tell you one thing, the price is right. <laughs> and you can make up all sorts of different sizes depending on the pipe and the sizes of ball you can find. And in a place like South Africa, it's not easy to find these dimple dies. And if you do, they are very expensive. So for me, this is an awesome solution. It works very well for me. So go forth, young man, and get some balls of steel. <laughs> Save those dollars for the fuel tank, because we certainly need it these days. So the easiest way for me to do the dimples on the seat is to work here on the floor. I'm just going to stick my piece of pipe in there. Have a look at it and if it seems to be not quite center I can move it around a little bit but it looks pretty good. Here we go, next one. He seems to be a little off. Nice. I think I just need to do this one a little bit more. And the last one in this row on his side here. Not bad. A little bit more. There we go. Oh, I got two more here. Just got my seat lying on a wooden spacer block in the back to keep it up. There we go. Okay, I've dimpled all the holes with my really basic dimple jig. <laughs> and I think it turned out great. My non-traditional bomber seat is basically done now. Um, I am planning to add some foam in here. Probably even on the back. So I'm not sure if I'm going to add more holes yet. I think I'm going to leave it like this for now, stick it in the truck, see what it looks like, maybe find some foam and we'll see down the line where we go. I've got my bomber seat on a temporary support there, 
I still need to finalize the height and I need to build a base for it. So I've uh, put some old pieces of foam in there just because I just want to get a feel for it. So let's give it a test drive. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's comfortable. And I think my height is pretty much spot on. Good vision. Looking good. Feeling good. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to work well. So I've got some tin canning in this backrest section. You know, when the metal goes boing, boing. <laughs> so I'm just busy adding some beads here just to get rid of that thin can effect and add a little bit of stiffness okay that should do it maybe one more turn That should do it. Whew. Got quite heavy in the end. <laughs> yes, that's stuffing it up nicely. No more boing boing. <laughs> so to mount my seat, I've added these two flat bars to the bottom. I made up this basic simple frame that will now fit in like so. So that will elevate my seat to the correct height. It bolts on here and here. And if need be, I can adjust the height down the line. So now it goes in like this. I still have to finalize my fore and aft position and all the rest of it before I bolt it down. So yeah, it won't be adjustable. But you can change it by drilling new holes. <laughs> but it doesn't need to be adjustable, it's for me, man. I didn't like the look of this open frame though. So I made myself a little cover. And that just goes on like that. And screws in place. I think that looks a whole lot better. Well, that's it for a driver's seat then. Remember, this is a right hand drive vehicle. <laughs> Um, I guess I need to build a passenger seat as well. Just now I want to pick up some body. <laughs> and then there were two. So now there's a seat for that somebody as well. <laughs> so I'm not going to bolt these seats down yet. I first need to install my steering column. And then I can see how far that needs to come out. And then finally decide. decide. <laughs> on my four and a half position for the seat. Hey, thanks for spending time with me. I enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video when I build a custom steering column and a custom steering wheel. Until then, have a lucky one. <laughs>